All right, well, we're up and at them again. Today we have a lot of plans and we'll see how many we get to. But this, this was not part of the plan at all. That below us is Crater Lake. And look at all of the clouds. It is absolutely freezing and very, very windy. All these clouds are blowing right in to the giant volcanic crater. The leftover hole from a huge volcano exploding that is Crater Lake. Exploding. It's been so warm at home, we didn't even bring proper jackets. Got Allie this sweet Walmart jacket and ready for this. Look at me going full Marty McFly. What time is this it? This is actually the first piece of the lake, which is really far below us, that we've even been able to see because it's so cloudy. Whoa, look at that island out there. The trees on it look so tiny. You can kind of see the far edge. This is wild. This is incredible. Look, you can see how fast moving that wind is up here. And then that tiny island down there is covered with huge pine trees. So that gives you a little sense of scale. There are waves down there, little white caps. Yikes. Oh wow, it's clearing up a little bit over to the side. Wow, now we kind of get a little bit of a view. Look at the size of this hole. And we're just seeing a little part of it. Allie, are you cold? Yes. Stomp your feet. Yeah, man, look at that. As you can see, not the most ideal day in the world if you expected a view across the entire gigantic crater lake. This is the third deepest lake in the world if you average the depth, not the third deepest point in a lake. Apparently this guy, John Wesley Hillman, was the first European man to uh, stumble across this lake right at this point, the Discovery Point. This was created by a huge volcanic explosion. I believe the island that we can no longer see is called Wizard Island, and somebody was saying that it was a volcano within the volcano. And supposedly the park has other extinct volcanoes and volcano cones, not always sure what the difference is. I'm not a geologist in it. This is amazing. This was not part of our plan to come to Crater Lake at all, but it was just off the road that we were heading up anyways, and so I figured, why not? Wow, dude, look at this. So cloudy, we're in the clouds now. Foggy, cloudy, misty, moist. Oh, man. This is a little spooky. Cliffs and fog and rain. Yeah. Moist. Once again, we're up above 8,000 feet here on the rim drive that goes around the massive lake. It is kind of spooky being up in the clouds like this. Not gonna lie. But it is October, so I guess that fits with the whole Halloween theme. Like, look at this. There's a drop on either side. I can't see how far. Okay, it's not too far on one side. This reminds me of the 13th Warrior. The Fire We haven't had too many glimpses of the lake, but just enough to say that we've seen the Crater Lake. So, in case I never make it back here, at least I can check that one off the list. Oh, wow, see? Now we can see most of it. I believe, if I read the sign correctly, it's six miles across. So that, Wizard Island there, is a big chunk of land. Oh my gosh, I do not like heights. See how this guy's looking, he's leaning against the wall. That's, that's me. Wow, man, that is crazy. It's almost 2,000 feet deep at its deepest point. Which makes it the ninth deepest lake in the world, including some, I think, in Antarctica, which are under glacier ice. Ooh, I can't even talk. My lips are getting numb. Anyway, look guys, we made it to Oregon. And what a sight it is. All right, as much as we like looking at one of the world's uh, biggest holes or whatever, like I said, this wasn't exactly on our list of plans and we've got other things to do today and many more miles to cover. So it's time to scoot, but that was a worthy diversion. All right, so we just checked on my National Parks checklist. I have now been to 15 of the 60, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's 25%. I just hit 25%. Just 75 more percent to go. Ooh, I knew Oregon was weird but I wasn't expecting to see anti-government Smokey the Bear weird. Ooh, and look at this, we got 
the Woodsman Country Lodge with a giant lumberjack. And check out the Bigfoot Tavern. Ooh, Bigfoot's thirsty. Look at the size of that bear. I don't even know what town that was, but it provided quite a bit of entertainment for me. All right, all this driving, and we're finally reaching our first destination of the day. We're back. At the world's last Blockbuster. Oh, it feels good to be back in Bend, Oregon again. Took a little longer to get here today than I thought it would because of our little detour to Crater Lake. But it is so good to see that sign again. We were here last year and we explored the entire interior of the Blockbuster and I signed up for a membership. And this is the perfect place to stop on the way to our final destination because it is movie related. So we are going to make it a Blockbuster night. Ooh, they changed which side you come in on since the last time we were here. But otherwise, it looks mostly untouched. The merchandise looks pretty much the same. They have added a few new things. Dude, this is awesome. I don't think these were here before. You can buy a quote-unquote retro VHS tape for only two bucks. Dude, genius. It'd be a little cooler if they were in the old Blockbuster VHS cases. The way it used to work was that only the front one would be the cover and then behind would be like this, you know? Except for a Blockbuster design. Oh, I love looking at the Blockbuster history section. For the longest time during the pandemic, the Blockbuster had to remain closed. They were having trouble keeping the doors open. And as you can see from the arrows, they did social distancing in here. They had curbside pickup while the store was closed. And for three and only three nights, they turned this Blockbuster into an Airbnb. We would have tried to get one of the slots, but it was for locals only at the time. Oh my gosh, look at this. The Little Mermaid 2, Pocahontas 2. They got a lot of Land Before Time sequels. Lady and the Tramp 2. A lot of sequels going on. Dude, coming to Blockbuster is like visiting an old friend. And then seeing some of these movies is like seeing more old friends. Oh, there's the TV they used for the 90s living room setup when they did Airbnb. Since the last time I was here, I believe they have come out with an official Instagram account. I think there's a documentary out now. There's a podcast. They are firing on all cylinders, keeping the legend of Blockbuster alive, trying to keep the doors open. Okay. Now for what we're really here for is to enhance our Halloween themed mission of the day. By entering the horror section. Look at this man. That is awesome. Since Allie didn't get to have her honeymoon this year and since it is Halloween time, I thought this was as good a time as any to take a little trip and take her to a place she's always wanted to go. A filming location from maybe her favorite movie of all time. Stanley Kubrick's. The Shining. It's my favorite. Basically, 99% of that movie was shot on sets in England. But one key important piece of the movie was filmed right here in Oregon. It's still a couple of hours away, but we were going to go somewhere related to Ali's favorite movie, and we had to grab a copy of Ali's favorite movie. And where better to do that than the world's last official Blockbuster video. Since the last time we were here, someone showed me a weird bootleg Blockbuster in Italy and some other ones around the world. But this is the last official franchise store still using the original computer software and still operating continuously under the original name. Oh my gosh. Yes! You're the man now, dog. You're the man now, dog. Ooh, here's another movie filmed in Oregon, another Halloween favorite. Well, I guess since we filmed every inch of this place the last time we were here, we really have no reason to stay in here for hours and hours, but it just feels so good being inside of here. I feel like I'm 10 years old and I get to rent the Hobbit or the Mouse in the Motorcycle or the Ninja Turtles. And if I'm really lucky, I can convince my dad that I need to rent a Nintendo game. Oh well, we got what we needed. Time to grab our purchases and head out. By the way, I believe you can now order the last Blockbuster merchandise online at their website if you want to support them and help keep them open. I bought a bunch last time, but there was one thing I just could not resist. Some Blockbuster shades. Oh yeah, come on now. You know you're jealous. All right, one last sick pick here in front of Blockbuster. And then it's time to make one of Allie's bucket list dreams come true. We are gonna head up the road to one of the filming locations from The Shining. Oh my gosh, it's so much longer of a drive than I thought it was gonna be, but at least it's, it's 
it's pretty up here in Oregon right now. Gotta head through all this flat stuff into the forest and up, up, up the mountains. There's a slight chance of rain and storms, so we're just crossing our fingers and hoping for the best. Hoping we get a little good weather and a little more sunlight. Hopefully it's gonna work out because we're almost there. Oh my gosh, this is it. This is the turn. This is the road. You getting more excited now? Yeah. This is Allie's dream to finally see in person with her own eyes Oregon's historic Timberline Lodge, also known and better known as the Overlook Hotel from Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Wow. What do you think, Allie? It's so cool. This historic hotel built by WPA workers during the Depression and dedicated by FDR himself. The very same hotel that inspired the design of the Overlook Hotel in The Shining. They did have a helicopter floating out there somewhere hovering for just a few shots in the movie in which they use this actual hotel itself. The real Timberline Lodge right here. So in those far back helicopter shots, this was the hotel in The Shining. All of the other shots where they're walking out to the hedge maze, which would be here where there's nothing. And any shot with Jack Nicholson, Shelley Duvall, Danny Lloyd, any of the actors, and all of the snow shots were filmed on a back lot in England. And all the hotel interiors were filmed in Elstree Studios as well. Now, if you're looking at this thinking, it doesn't quite match up to what you remember in the movie. It's because they rebuilt this facade pretty much life-size, but without this pyramid shaped lobby entrance in the middle. So the film set was pretty much an exact replica of this. Yeah, basically instead of that center pyramid shape, they just built another one of these little stepped out sort of side entrance things where that would be. Snuggled right up against the garage where the snow cat was. So it's a little disorienting. It uh, doesn't match the helicopter shots at all in the movie. Most movie fans would say, ah, oh, look, it's a movie mistake, it's a movie flub, but uh, Stanley Kubrick fans would be like, no, he did it on purpose. It's an extra layer of unreality to confuse the viewer. Either way, this same sort of three little columns of windows, you see that shape, is the main bulk of the Shining set in the movie. You see those little windows there? If this were the actual place they filmed, this window right about there would be where Danny escaped and slid out the bathroom window down the snow. Man, that would have been one big slide to the ground. Of course, in the movie, instead of being next to that pyramid, it would have been next to another structure like this. So if we walk over here, we should be able to kind of get a look at an angle that better resembles the movie. See those like sort of three steps there? So imagine another one of those where that pyramid shape would have been. See, it's all very similar to the set they built for the movie The Shining, but also nothing quite matches up exactly. There's one shot where the Torrance family is getting the tour and the guy's gonna go show them where the snow cat is that kinda matches up to this. Very similar, not perfect, because again, that was shot in a movie back lot. And this, like I said before, was just used for those helicopter shots. But dude, they did an insane job of matching up exactly the architecture of the real life Timberline Lodge where we are now with their movie set for the Overlook Hotel. This is awesome. How do you feel? Are you excited? Uh, yeah. It doesn't match up perfectly, of course. It's so weird being here, kind of disorienting. It's freaking freezing also, which is why <laughs> yeah. she's masked and not talking. <laughs> it's so cold. Whew, so now I kind of know how Jack Nicholson was feeling at the end of the movie, huh? Poor Jack Torrance. Now in real life, they would have left the hotel this way and there would have been the hedge maze, the famous hedge maze, right across from the entrance. And obviously there's no hedge maze here in real life, but even in the film, the hedge maze moves around. The entrance is in different spots, depending on the scene from the movie. And you'll notice that even though in that helicopter shot, the snow cat was parked in front of this area, there's no actual snow cat garage on the side of the hotel in real life. However, there are plenty of other buildings for the year-round ski area up on the mountain behind this hotel. Mount Hood, I believe, in real life, which normally you'd be able to see here behind the hotel. But at the moment is completely wreathed in clouds and fog. Look at that snow up there. It's supposed to be raining right now and it may still rain tonight. So luckily we got here with just enough remaining sunlight and clear weather 
to see this. Oh yeah, see from this angle, that looks so familiar. So shining-ish. A lot of people think, no, the hedge maze was supposed to be at the back. But the architecture of the back of the building looks nothing like this front piece that they used in the film itself. Maybe tomorrow morning we'll go out there and take a look out back. But at the moment, my thumbs are numb, my lips are frozen. It's getting hard to talk. It's what, 37, 36 degrees out here? And so I think, my friends, we're gonna have to seek some shelter. Luckily, this isn't the end of our Timberline Lodge shining Stanley Kubrick adventure because we didn't just come up the road to look at the Overlook Hotel. We came up the road for Allie to stay in the Overlook Hotel. It looks nothing like the Overlook in the movie, but we actually got a room at the Timberline Lodge, which means we're going in. Dude, this is awesome. Look at this head right here in the doorway. Ooh, it's like those Calumet cans, or Calumet, or however you say it. Stanley Kubrick theories. Okay, look at this entrance. Wow, they don't make them like they used to. Look at that WPA craftsmanship. Dude, this place is insane. Wow, this is unbelievable. Believable. Obviously, the inside of the real Timberline Lodge looks a lot different than the hotel in The Shining. But the interior of the Overlook in the movie was inspired by the interior of the Awani Hotel in Yosemite, which was actually designed by the same architect, Gilbert Stanley Underwood. It's kind of weird, a double connection there. Oh yeah, dude, this place gives me Shining vibes anyways. Even if the hotel in the movie wasn't based on the outside of this place. Because this place is a ski lodge. We're past its summer season and we're just before its crazy winter season. So there are a number of people here, but it's definitely not a packed house. Which means every couple of minutes we turn a corner and see nobody. Not only is this place amazing on its face, but it's also amazing. It seems so much smaller on the outside than you expect it to be from the movie. And yet inside there are all these twists and turns and little hallways. And look at this. There's all these little historic sections. Basically like a full on miniature museum. Wow, unbelievable. I was not expecting this. Look at that. That was Franklin Delano Roosevelt's chair, designed and built for him. He actually used that chair right there, the president. This is apparently a model room, like a sample of what the original rooms looked like. Let's we'll see how our room stacks up. Wow, look at this. They've got the whole history laid out here. And inside the room where the little historical film is playing, check it out. The hotel even has a little nod to their movie history as well. What do you think, Allie? You just need a typewriter now. Dude, all of this is awesome. And there's the registration desk right over there. But this ground floor isn't even the main floor. To see that, we're gonna have to go up these stairs. I apologize for the muffled sound of my voice. As you know, we are still in the whole pandemic thing, so cloth masks are required here at all times. As part of the COVID-19 preventative measures. You'll understand, you'll understand. Wow, look at this. We've reached it. The official first floor, and boy, oh boy, is it a doozy. Would you look at the size of this place? Oh man, it's that classic National Park Lodge style. That very American looking form of architecture. Which you just don't see anywhere else. Look at these huge windows, the curtains. Oh, Ali found a desk to do some writing at here. Doing a little writing alley. You'll notice in all the nooks and crannies that this place is full of paintings, mosaics, art of all kinds. The biggest and best piece of art is just the hotel itself. All that stone downstairs and on the outside and on this huge chimney here. That's all locally sourced stuff, local boulders. And all the rest of it is built out of these huge hand-hewn timbers. Dude, this place is astounding. As you can see, they have a beautiful restaurant down here in the form of the Cascade Dining Room. Where at least Allie will be eating later. There's also a bar upstairs, but look at this. Right next to the stairway we came up, I never noticed this huge door. 
That is the door. And that stone pyramid shaped entryway. Dude, look at the size of that handle right there. Can you even handle it, bro? I wonder if they ever use that door or if it's just ceremonial. Only when FDR comes a call. Alright, we're gonna head back in and upstairs real quick to look at the bar. Wow, look at it. Man, it's gorgeous. Oh man, I wonder how many times the bartenders here have had to hear, Hair of the dog that bit me, Lloyd. Hair of the dog that bit me. The bar up here is called the Ram's Head Bar, and if you look closely, there are actually carved ram's heads above it. Thus the name. Look at this, there are also really beautiful views out of the windows up here on the second floor. And so many little nooks and crannies to have a drink, to relax. There's even another perfect little typewriter nook for an aspiring Jack Torrance. Oh my gosh, look at that. It's the greatest nook or cranny of them all, right here in the front of that pyramid, that stone-faced front of the hotel. It's this massive window looking out over the mountains, towards the Pacific Ocean. Portland is yonder somewhere. It's all wreathed in clouds now. But not as badly as the backside up Mount Hood. That is totally covered. Man, that is stunning. Unbelievable views, man. Unbelievable. All right, well, before it gets completely dark, I guess we should head to our room and check that out. Luckily, since we've already come up to the second floor, we're pretty close. Just step down this way and up this side flight as our room is on the third floor. Dude, look at these. Apparently, all these carved newel posts started life as cedar utility poles purchased for like two bucks each. And most of them, all the ones I've seen, are carved on top into the shapes of animals. Some of them are absolutely fantastic. Dude, look at this duck right here. Perfect for Oregon. And that is so awesome. The whole building is a work of art. Ooh. And there's the first creepy Shinings vibe thing I've seen. Where the heck does that little staircase go? I don't even want to know. All right, look at this. Here we are. The third floor. Whoa. That is quite a hallway down there. Look at that. Come and play with us, Allie. Forever and ever and ever. Ooh. This place has been open since the 1930s. Could be haunted. You never know. Hallie, you're always saying that you hope you see a ghost. Yeah. How come? I don't know. I think it would be kind of cool. I do not think it would be kind of cool. I don't want to see that at all. Maybe Casper. He's a friendly ghost. All right, so in the movie, the bad room is 237. And luckily, we're on the third floor with 303. So hopefully, no one will appear in our bathtub. Dude, look at that. Old school, actual hotel keys. How fun. Look at this. Oh, man. Finally, our own space. We can take off the masks and reveal our true identities. Oh, dude, it's gorgeous. Pictures did not do this justice. All the pictures I saw online made this look like a kid's room from the 1990s. They, like, brightened up all the wood, but this is cool. Not only is it actually rustic, given that, you know, this place is in the middle of nowhere, but it's also historic and beautiful. From what I could tell, there were three different kinds of rooms. There were rooms like this with either a queen bed and a twin bed or two queens. Then there were these fireplace rooms which we could not afford. And then even more affordable, weirdly, were these huge rooms with like 12 beds in them because there were a whole bunch of bunk beds, apparently for the skiers. Spoiler alert, even this room here, which was the least expensive room we could get since all the bunk beds were gone, ran us about 300 bucks. And remember, it's still sort of an off season right now. And that's not even including tax, but luckily I used Hotels.com and I have a bunch of those free nights saved up from previous trips. So we got this for a sweet discount. I applied my free night to it. It still wasn't free. It only cost a, uh, about a hundred bucks. So like a normal hotel room. And no, I'm not sponsored by Hotels.com, but I wish I was because then I'd probably get even more free rooms and wouldn't that be sweet? Dude, look at the TV. is so, so tiny. And of course, there isn't actually a Blu-ray player for us to watch The Shining on, but Allie did bring an iPad so we can pretend. We can pretend. All right, check this out. In here, we have the historic tiled bathroom with a very public looking toilet. <laughs> nice sink over there. 
beautiful tile work and look at this shower. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What the heck is this? Look at me, I have a chair, I have a chair. King in the castle, king in the castle. Oh, there may not be a bathtub, but look at this. You got a shower with a seat. You got a microphone to sing Elvis songs into. There's a rail in case you fall in and you can't get up. And thankfully, there's no bathtub. I know you like baths and I like baths, but think about it. Do you really want to stay in a shining hotel and risk someone appearing in the bathtub? No. No. No, you don't. Look at that. We got one chair over there, another chair over here. Some free, fancy water. Better be free, man. This room is pricey enough. A nice snow boot removing bench. A phone that, if it's not original, at least looks period correct. Some very Texas Chainsaw Massacre looking <laughs> lampshades. And last but not least, they even have a closet. Where we actually stashed our stuff when we came up here earlier. And uh, as you can see, it just fits in there. Oh, and by the way, there's this fan that looks like it was put into the room uh, the year the hotel opened. It's so heavy in metal. Wait a minute. Which means it's a heavy metal fan. Andy Kubrick, Steve King, heavy metal fan, horror movie. Now, I have never read the book The Shining. I have only seen the movie, and I've seen it over and over and over. <laughs> thanks to you, but you have read the book. It's yes. one of your very favorite books. It is my favorite book, and it was actually based on the Stanley Hotel in Colorado, I think. Yeah, that's where Stephen King stayed when he yeah. wrote it, or when he was inspired, something like that. Right, um, and then in the book, the haunted room is actually 217, but when they shot the movie here, I think they asked them to change the number so that people wouldn't get scared to stay in the room 217. But there's no room 237 here, so... Right, because there is a 217 here, so if they kept the room number the same, they were worried people might be afraid to stay in there. Little did they know that that room would be requested almost continuously ever since the movie came so out. In the movie, it's room 237. That's the worst room in the hotel. Because there is no 237, and ironically, now guests like you show up wanting 237, and you get told there's no such thing. No. I would stay in 217. Oh, that's true. That's true. What I want to know is, does the Stanley Hotel that the book is actually based off of have a 217? And is 217 the actual room number where Stephen King stayed? Is that the actual haunted room there? Because supposedly I there think, is a haunted room there. I think they have it. So they're proud of it, probably. Probably. Plus, I think the Stanley has actually built a hedge maze outside, a little miniature one for visitors and so someday we'll have to go there so they're kind of proud of their shining heritage up here on the mountain at the timberline they're into it but they have guests here for other reasons like going to bed here to get a good night's sleep for skiing which is the most romantic thing you can do skiing we'll do that someday after marriage all right it has been a very long day we've been driving for something like 12 hours all told with all the different stops and with the the national parks and the, the, the trying to buy food. And the getting gas and the renting movies. And I have not eaten one single thing all day. And the Cascade Room here promises that they can make me gluten-free food. So I'd love to talk about this more and show you the view from our window. But that will have to wait for morning because we are hungry. And trust me, you guys do not want to hang out with a hungry alley. Because she gets mean. She goes full Jack Nicholson. Here's Allie! Here's Allie! Ah! Ah! I'm hungry! Okay, okay, I'll get you food! Okay, guys, I hate to leave you here in the dark, but I've got a hungry shining fan on my hand, so I'll have to catch you guys in the morning. Oh, good morning, and there it is. The view from our window. Not much better than the view at nighttime, honestly. And sadly, it won't be our window much longer because you hear that outside, that's the storm. Heavy wind and rain have made their way up the mountain. There is now a threat of a quote-unquote heavy snowstorm, according to the weather 
Uh, and all jokes aside, I don't want to actually end up like Jack Nicholson, frozen to death in the hedge maze. This Southern California boy is not fond of driving in the snow, and we definitely don't want to get snowed in here. Not that it wasn't a nice room, and it wasn't very cool to stay somewhere so historic, but, you know, it's a little pricey staying a day you didn't intend to. And so, my friends, the game's been called on account of weather. We won't be able to walk the grounds and explore a little more. Maybe sometime in the future. But we did make it up here, and we did make one of Allie's bucket list dreams come true. And so, we can leave this fine historic establishment safe and secure in the knowledge that we've done our duty. We can go home and sleep well. I think the Stanley Hotel in Colorado has actually built a hedge maze yep. based off the movie. So they have a little mini hedge maze. Hedge. Hedge. Dang it. Okay, we'll go get food. I'm hungry. This is actually Allie in her natural habitat. Blockbuster and McDonald's. Make it a blockbuster night. Dude, I love these chairs. I wish I could build chairs. I'd build myself a Timberline Lodge chair. Awesome. Do that future dining room table goals. First, I need to find a house, though. Boom, 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 boom. It looked so easy, didn't it? It looked so easy to just leave. But in reality, where's Allie? She won't leave. She refuses to leave. Okay, so I was wondering what the heck this ugly piece of wood was in here. Like, who's paying for gold or whatever that I realized? It's a screen for the window. So like, if it's warm enough, which I doubt it rarely ever is, you open this up, pop in the screen. That's ingenious. I guess you could say this hotel was screen used in more ways than one. Yeah. I came in a happy meal. And you can tell because I'm so happy. 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 I am the colors of a 90s windbreaker. Woo! <coughs> gotcha. Shined you. I shined you. Get it? It's a thing. Didn't even think about whether or not I had the key in the pocket. Could have been locked out forever. Had to go sleep in the hedge maze. Yeah. In this weather. Who am I? Olaf. Olaf? <laughs> I like warm hugs. You're funny. You have a funny giggle. Are you happy to be here? Yeah. Shining Hotel. Yay. You did it. It's so cool. You finally did it. Was it everything you expected? Yeah. You wish it looked like the Awani inside though, huh? Like you wish it looked like the real hotel. Yeah. Why don't they build one of those? You build they it. Build the outside you of build this. the Overlook Hotel. So Me far. with my own bare hands. Yes. Well, we all need money, so you need your hands. <laughs> my own two hands. That's your dream though, right? <laughs> Just build a miniature one so it looks like it's three stories, but it's actually one story and there's only like three rooms. Yeah. You can build it in the forest. And the inside will just have the elevator with blood on one wall and the bed on the other wall. So when you're sleeping, the elevator doors open and this huge rush of blood gets all over you while you yeah. sleep. And then you wake up, you're like, ah, blood, I'm allergic <laughs> to blood. Like, it's just corn syrup. Even worse. <laughs> they break out in hives and sue you. And then you go out of business. I was still recording. You didn't even know. I said, you. Ow. Yeah, see, we don't want to end up like this, even though it would be fun to ski off the roof, I think. Oh, new opportunities for play in every season of the year.